Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. A lot of people wanted to see inside the new 3000T Agilent X-Series Oscilloscope. Well, let's take a look. We'll compare it with the original uh, 3000X uh, series. I don't, uh, 3000A X-Series, a little bit confusing. I don't expect a huge um, difference, if any difference at all, because it's still the same Mega Zoom uh, for ASIC. It's still, uh, I don't know, have they upgraded the processor eh, or anything else? I doubt it. And my 3000A, by the way, is one of the first um, models released. So whether or not they've actually incrementally uh, improved the hardware in the four years since my one was manufactured, I don't know. So the differences may not be, um, may have been incremental in those series. Anyway, let's have a look inside. You know what we say here on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. And we've just got four screws on the back here, including a secret squirrel one inside the probe compartment there. And if we, that should be enough to, oh, no, oh, got to release the uh, module. That should be enough to, ta-da, pop the hood. And we should see exactly the same awesome build quality that we saw in the original uh, 3000 series and it's all shielded of course very nice oops I'm not sure what that is it's like part of the plastic case is sort of broken off on the inside around that screw hole hmm. someone tightened that screw up too tight and fractured the plastic or something and we can try and place spot the difference um exactly the same ys tech uh fan we had before i don't think they're a, a huge brand name but look at the uh rubber compliant uh mount they've got on there exactly the same as the previous one of course but that's just uh to reduce the vibration very very nice uh, absolutely identical so far and yes, that is my blood. There we go. Oh, this metal chassis is really quite sharp. This part of it anyway, this cover that goes over the power supply. This is not the first time I've done this. Doll. And we've got exactly the same high quality power supply from Lineage Power. Very nicely uh, designed. Can't fold it at all. Beautiful riveting down in there on the uh, crimped and insulated earth connector exactly the same as before no difference in fact ta-da spot the difference i don't think you can hmm in fact four years apart both of them are still rev a same model number and here we go we've taken the uh, front panel off and that just uh, came off with uh, plastic clips on the side so uh, exactly as before and ta-da we're in like flynn Bob's your uncle. No worries. Well, there you have it. That's going to be a very quick teardown. In fact, that's probably the end of it almost because it's identical to the 3000A. Eh, that's what I thought and I wasn't uh, surprised at all. Exactly the same. The only change is the addition of the uh, touch uh, touchscreen shielded. Uh, touchscreen module. You can see that it's a bit of an afterthought just uh, tacked on there. They've got an extra chip over here and an extra connector with the cable going over there. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. And if you don't believe me, let's play Spot the Difference. Here we go. Can you? No, not really. Exactly the same. Well, looky what we have here. Keysight couldn't even be bothered designing their own board. They've just used an off-the-shelf, by the looks of it, EETI. Uh, it, what's that? An E-Galax? E-MPIA Technology Inc. Uh, touchscreen, uh, capacitive touchscreen driver board. So, yeah, they just went, oh, marketing have just gone, oh, we need something to compete. Come on, let's, you know, the MDO 3000's out. Let's do something. Let's add FFT. Let's add our zone trigger down from the 4000 series. And let's add touch as well. Yay, she'll be right. We'll just whack that in. Oh, it's a bit disappointing. But ultimately, that's, you know, practical engineering for you. You just tack things on like that, get the product to market. And, uh, well, they did have to redesign the board a little bit. I mean, they have tacked on this little puppy over here. 
They have relayed out the board, they've added that, they've added the connector, but that's basically the only difference I can see, really. I mean, I'll post the high-res uh, photos down below um, in the links so that you can have a look at it yourself, but it's identical apart from that, I believe, anyway, from my cursory glance. And check it out, if you take out all that metal work, all they've done is actually reuse an existing mounting hole in the chassis, put it on a longer screw, and screw it in. It's a rather clever, well, it's a rather nicely executed retrofit, actually, to an existing des design. And they've changed the silk screen there. If you uh, notice uh, the other one, it doesn't say no screw. So it says no screw there. So when they're actually assembling it, you can see this one has the uh, targets on them there saying insert a screw. So whereas the uh, 3000A, before, yeah, it had the same target in there plus the uh, screw, so we haven't been screwed. But wait, hold on to your hats. I found a difference. Look, this is the uh, 3000A, the original. This is the 3000T. They've changed the Spartan, um, the Xilinx Spartan FPGA here. It was a 3S1200 uh, on the 3000A. It's now a uh, 3S1600. So uh, bigger, it's the same series chip, just bigger, got more gates in it. Whether or not uh, they're doing, they did that because they want extra functionality like that FFT stuff uh, perhaps that they're doing, that might be happening in there, uh, I'm I'm guessing, but because uh, all the zone triggering stuff perhaps, or both, but I think the MegaZoom ASIC uh, 4 might be implementing the uh, zone triggering over there, I can't remember offhand, but uh, yeah, they have increased that, um, just the capacity of that thing a reasonable amount, but apart from that, we've still got the same um, Spear 600 uh, processor here, uh, one of these applications uh, processors. Still exactly the same. That's an ST ARM processor. And here, I believe, is the main 10 megahertz crystal oscillator in the old 3000A. Now, this was, I think, you know, 25 ppm or something. They have drastically increased that by more than order of magnitude in the new one. It's 1.6 ppm, if memory serves me correctly. So let's go on over to the new one. And there you go. It has changed. They've actually put that, looks like they've put it on, or they've ordered it in a uh, little ceramic uh, hybrid uh, type daughter board, and they sold it into the existing footprint. So maybe that was a late design after thought perhaps from marketing they said oh what what other differentiator can we do oh can we whack in a better crystal and they're going oh no we can't really get one in the same footprint maybe it wasn't affordable maybe they got a bargain on these ones who knows but yeah that's the uh, 1.6 ppm main crystal and it's changed and yeah squeezed into the existing footprint with a ceramic hybrid interesting there you go there's a better look at the puppy and uh yeah i don't recognize it uh offhand but if anyone wants to decode that go for it now i can't show you the one gig front end unfortunately because these shielding cans are uh, soldered directly into the board so yeah it's a huge effort to get those out probably damage the unit or the high likelihood but uh the interesting thing to note uh, trust me it is different to the 500 megahertz one i've got in the 3000a but it'll be identical to the one gig version of the 3000a which is a different one again they've got a metal can relay there, whereas in the five, like a shielded relay, whereas in the 500 megahertz one, it looks like they've got two plastic ones down in there. So yeah, that'd be a uh, high frequency RF relay down in there, I'd be guessing. But they have certainly given the board an entirely different part number. This is the new one here. Here it is, here is uh, 75037. And the old 3000A is 75019. So that was actually up to Rev 5 by the time I got mine, which was one of the first release uh, units. And likewise with this one, um, already up to Rev 4, even though it's just released. And of course, they've changed their name from Agilent to Keysight. Oh, goodness. So everything else is exactly the same except for the inclusion of the capacitive touch screen which you can see there with the cables going over to that module on the back. Apart from that, it's basically identical. And the front rotary encoder board here, it's almost identical. Yes, they have uh, upgraded that they may have added the few extra buttons on there. I'm not going to bother uh, to take all the knobs and everything off to see if there's any spare buttons. Eh, nah, couldn't be bothered. I really do like the modular nature of the uh, 3000 design, and I've said it before, like, you know, the front panel just clips off like that, complete with all the knobs and the uh, everything else intact, all the buttons, the membrane keypad, and there's just, 
a couple of uh, cable looms and uh, things like the um, the flat flex here going to the LCD, just holding it together and, well, actually connecting the different modules together. So it's a really well designed from a systems engineering point of view. Always has been impressive. So I think this teardown's just been a tad over 10 minutes. Very quick indeed. So thanks for uh, Keysight for sending this in, the uh, 3000T. We've done a review. If you haven't seen the review, that'll be linked in here as well. Check it out. And uh, this teardown is exactly the same. No real uh, surprises in there. Just upgraded one FPGA by the looks of it. So um, the MegaZoom 4 A6 here, they're of course going to be exactly the same. The ADC A6 in here, going to be exactly the same. You've got one ADC sharing uh, two channels exactly like you did before. Everything's exactly the same. The same um, spear arm processor up here, but yeah, just a little bit more grunt for maybe the zone triggering and the uh, FF T functions and whatever else maybe they've got uh, in store in the future. Who knows? Anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up because I did draw some blood out of that one. And if you want to discuss it, EV blog forum link is down below and also the high res teardown photos as always are linked in down below as well. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. Winner!